Hey everybody, this is Rob Archangel of Archangel Inc. And here we are going to go through the steps to mastering a file on Audacity. As you can see, we have our desktop and I am opening up the file in Audacity. Gives you this option to save it and copy the file and you want to select that. All right, now we are going to zoom in several times, get a better sense of the recording, and uh, be able to see its texture a little bit better. And listening in, just trying to get a sense of the background sound. And we'll go ahead and pause it here in just a moment. And select a section. No plus stop and go to noise removal, get the noise profile. We'll click on that there. And then we'll go back to noise removal. And we're going to remove the noise. As you can tell, I didn't click outside of that selected section, so it only removed the noise of the section that I highlighted. So we're going to go back and click noise removal once again and remove noise from the whole recording. Now this recording is, oh, about five or six minutes long to start with, and takes a minute and a half or so to remove all of the noise from it. And here we are. Now we will start playing that section that we've removed the noise from, and see if it still sounds all right. Sounds like what we're looking for. Not too much going on there. We don't want to hear any buzzing or pops or clicks. And once we know that it sounds okay, we can begin listening to the recording. And go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more. I like to zoom in until about 15 or 30 seconds or so is visible at once of the recording. Gonna zoom in once again there. Yeah, it looks like 20 seconds. That seems about the right texture for my preference. And right here, we are going to remove all but the first half of, or excuse me, the first half second of dead air, of silent space, of the ambient background noise. And that's by Audacity's specifications. They require one half second before the name of the chapter and 2.5 seconds after the chapter title before the body of the text begins. So right now you can see we're going to copy just that half second of dead air space and we're going to insert it and we're going to go ahead and Remove the rest of that dead air space there and paste over it. And that's one half second. And we'll go ahead and do that several times. There we go. So clicked out. So we've copied and pasted now several times. I'm using the keystrokes. That's Control V or Command V if you're on a Mac as I am. So now we have the half second of dead air space before the name of the chapter, or in this case, the file, and two and a half seconds of space afterward. And now it's playing along in real time. What I'm doing over here with the cursor is after every section that sounds pretty good, I am removing, or excuse me, moving the cursor so that I can 
know how far back the recording was recorded error-free. Right there, I just highlighted a section where there were various little pops. You can notice that in the texture of the audio. And I highlighted them and then pasted the dead airspace over it. There's another section right there. So I've highlighted it. Press stop and I am removing it. Just pressing backspace or delete. And here we come to another section right there. That little breath that is audible on the recording. You can hear it and we want to remove that and keep the recording sounding crisp and clear. So go back and now I've started to play again. Once again, there is another section where there is just a little, little breath that you can see. We want to remove that, keep just the background ambient noise. What I'm doing in this case is getting the noise profile, just in case there are other breaths like this. I don't know. I haven't listened to the audio, the full audio yet, but there might be. There are several already, so it might not be a bad idea to copy this little section and remove the noise and allow it to be taken out by Audacity. Any other sound clips that are in this recording that match that particular profile, that particular noise profile, will be removed. And now it's applied to the entire recording, and we can continue playing again. I have my cursor in a section where I know it's good up until that point. Sounds pretty good. Continuing to listen along and insert the cursor as we move back, or rather move forward, to the next part of the recording, wherever we may be. And here we go. Here's a good example of why I keep that cursor moving forward. All I had to do there was highlight the big section of dead air, stop the recording, and delete it. So rather than scroll backwards and chase down where, where it ended and where the last good section was, I was able to just stop and highlight it. And here we go again. Another section. There's a little bit of noise. You can see it in the video there and we paste it over that with our ambient background noise. And here's a section that we recorded. It sounded okay, but the full thought didn't quite come out as we wanted it. So we removed it, and it looks like there's another section here. And now that's the third repetition, and this one I think is going to be just fine. So you might end up having to do that, where your narrator will record one section several times until it comes out sounding the way you want it to. And in that case, you can just remove the audio and leave the section that you want as your final edition behind. And here we go again, another little section where there's some noise, possibly a breath being heard through the microphone. I want to remove that. And it's pretty subtle, but there is a little pop there that you can hear. And we want to go ahead and highlight that section. 
and paste the dead air over it so that it sounds pretty good. Now I've gone back and listened to it, and I like the way it sounds, so we can continue on with the recording. As you may notice, there's a lot of time as you are doing this recording where you are just paying close attention. The majority of the mastering process is just listening and paying attention to what's going on on screen, seeing these little blips, these little pops, and making sure they're removed, and making sure that the recording sounds the way we want it to sound. And here we go. There's another dead air section. There might be moments like that where, for whatever reason, the narrator stops recording for 5 seconds or 30 seconds, and we can go ahead and just remove those so that the final listening experience for the reader is as we would expect it to be. No unnecessary pauses in between sections, and it's one smooth, flowing final recording. And there we go. I've highlighted a section. I start to play it back from where it began so that I know that it is what I want to remove. Then I just hit delete. You can, of course, go to edit paste if you want to remove the section and insert a section of the dead air over it. Or you can just delete it if you want to just remove that section and have it flow smoothly onto the next part of the recording that we have left intact. And once again, we're listening through, and that section was not quite what we wanted it to be, so we've highlighted it and deleted it. And here we are. We've come to just about the end of the recording, and we want to finish it off right at the end of where we stop speaking, and go ahead and insert the dead air space, 3.5 seconds worth, which is what Audible requires. Now we are ready to complete the recording. And I'm just going back and listening through it, making sure that it starts off sounding good. It's an appropriate amount of space as per Audible's requirements. Once you have this, you want to turn it into a mono track recording. This is also per Audible's requirements. And then we're going to go ahead and export it and turn it into an MP3 file. That's fine, I'll save it right there on my desktop. We want to click on Options, make sure it's set to Constant and 192 KBPS, and we enter all the appropriate title names, artist name, and track number, and audiobook, and year of publication. Those were all filled in, but you may need to fill those in for each MP3 file that you create for each chapter of your audiobook. And now we have the mp3 file, and it's saved on our desktop. Now we have the mp3 file saved, and we want to turn that back into a stereo file. And then we'll go ahead and save the project. And we'll name it something that makes sense to us. And then we can close out the file. And that is our chapter. Now you'll go ahead and you'll do the same process for every chapter of your recording. and. 
You'll also make sure to include some specialty tracks that are not going to be a part of the body of your work, and those include the introductory credits and the ending credits, as well as a commercial sample, which is one to five minutes and contains a section of your audiobook that you want to display to listeners and prospective readers who might not know about you yet and want to know more and get a sample of your work. That is it. Hopefully this has been helpful. Good luck with your audiobook projects.